I'm Cheryl Hahn, and uh, I'm the former director of the Larson Gallery. I served in that position from uh, 2006 to 2012. And uh, it was a pleasure to serve in that position on the campus of Yakima Valley Community College. But uh, as a gallery director, I noticed when I came to the college that there was sort of a big divide between what the gallery was doing and what the college was doing. And I saw it as a missed opportunity for students, first of all, who had never been in an art gallery before, uh, that they could experience that culturally. But secondly, we presented numerous exhibitions that I felt were beneficial to other academic departments. And uh, early on, I thought about an idea called curriculum integration. And I had tried to get faculty to participate in what we were doing here, but without a formal, well-articulated uh, program, they couldn't see how they could bring an English class to the Larson Gallery or a history class to the Larson Gallery uh, and experience the art and that experience be augmenting whatever they're studying. Well, uh, we then had an exhibit that opened uh, in January of 2013 called Abaya and Beyond. And I thought, now this is it, because not only do we have an exhibition with a diversity of work, but we also have a book written by the artist. And it was a very timely exhibition in that it is about uh, Dr. Yvonne Pepin Wakefield, who taught art in Kuwait at a college there uh, for six years. And she ended up doing a body of work uh, documenting, in a way, uh, both digesting the information of being in Kuwait personally and professionally. Uh, and she wrote a book called Suitcase Filled with Nails. So I approached the Ethnic Studies Department in the fall of 2012, and actually during the summer of 2012, and several English uh, professors and said, look at here is a great opportunity for students to read a book, come to the gallery, see the actual artwork that the artist made, meet the artist, and walk away with a new understanding of what it means to be a young woman uh, growing up in Kuwait, in the Middle East. Several English and art classes incorporated reading the book Suitcase Filled with Nails. They also studied and wrote about the works in the gallery through several visits and completed assignments based on criteria outlined by their instructors. Students taking English wrote about specific works of art and incorporated their own contemporary perspective. Art students in the ceramics class produced artworks based on their interpretation of the work in the gallery and writings from the book. The artist, Yvonne Pepin Wakefield, also visited several of these classes and shared her experience of teaching in Kuwait and her thoughts behind the work she produced. Other classes, such as Humanities and Ethnic Studies, incorporated short assignments based on a visit to this exhibition. Upon evaluation of the work produced by the students, it is gratifying to see success towards several of the arts learning standards. These learning standards, set out by the Washington State Office of Public Instruction, are aimed specifically at early learning standards for K-12, but can also be demonstrated at the college level. It is the mission of the OSPI with regards to the arts to communicate and integrate life, literacy, and learning through experience for all learners. It is specifically this focus on experience where we use the gallery as a setting for interaction. In these standards, the students understand and applies art and knowledge, uses artistic processes, and makes connections within and across the arts. Listening to each of these students and their instructors, we see the effect of curriculum integration with the Larson Gallery. Immediately the concept of double think um, struck me and it was something that I felt was very pertinent to the kinds of situations you were facing over there in Kuwait uh, again and again, um, the way the culture is set up. Um, so that one came pretty easy. It really is, I felt, um, also a, a nice visual expression of some of those same concepts of doublethink. I really love this painting because from the beginning these look like flames to me. Before David Links ever said anything about this being the painting you might have painted when your brother died, I already liked this painting. Like, I walked in and this is the only painting I could see. Like, 
I don't know why, it just sucked me in. I, I couldn't see any of the paintings, and there's obviously paintings on this wall, but I just immediately saw this painting. And it's not even like the most lit up one, but this is the only one I could see. And I just walked to it and I looked at it. There was classmates and I was talking to them and I still had to come back and look at this picture. I too almost lost my daughter in a fire, so I, it kind of like makes me wonder yeah, I if I lost her, what would my paintings look like? By reading her book, I understood how she felt. She wasn't just an author, you know what I mean? Like, I knew how she felt. Like, I feel like I know you. <laughs> I feel like I know you just because I read your book. I feel like I was, like, I don't feel like I was there with you, but I feel like, like a friend, like, you know what has happened in the past. So, having that, and then looking at the images, kind of, together, makes me, like, feel like I know you more. <laughs> I started marking spots that were important. At first, I just marked, like, why I thought she stayed, and I started, like, these are all why, she, why I thought she stayed. These are all the pages. And then here, these are, the yellow ones are quotes that I used, and the green ones are examples. So I kind of just... Is that, that your that own system? Me, yeah, that helped me write my paper. <laughs> so I wouldn't have to be flipping back and forth looking for it. I would know where it was. <laughs> for our class, we had to draw, or paint, or sketch, three sketches for, in our sketchbook but I didn't follow the rules, so I drew five. <laughs> and this is the first one I chose. I liked how simple it was. I liked the gray and the blacks. And I don't know why, but I couldn't stop looking at that, so I had to add that to my painting. This is fascinating, Next. actually, Amanda, because you, this was for your art class, so you've really yes. had an integrated experience this quarter. Yeah. Because you did this for your art class. Well, we did this last quarter, then, too, but we didn't read a book about the people that were in here. Right. But then in your <laughs> English class, you were writing about these paintings and about Yvonne's work yeah. and yeah. her presentation. I'm like the only so. one that was that had the insight in art class. Because you were in art at the same time. Because I read the book. Yeah. It's almost like a learning community without the art teacher and the teacher <laughs> talking to each other. Yeah. Yvonne's students said that Barbie was an inspirational image growing up as a child uh -huh. and like explored the irony between um, liking Barbie that much and wearing those really conservative clothing. So I just rolled with their own explanations that uh, Barbie is the perfect woman and would be the perfect wife to a husband. Mm -hmm. And I thought that uh, even though it seems weird that like Barbie, which is a really Western sort of um, idea, I guess, uh, the ideas behind Barbie in the West is like just basically feminine virtues and everything. And those are the same virtues that are loved by, I guess, societies everywhere. You have um, symbols of, I guess, Eastern and Western culture juxtaposed with each other. Yeah, I don't know, like I hadn't really experienced being in an art gallery like this before. Uh -huh. I've just seen pictures and thought, okay, well I guess art's not for me. But oh. when you're actually like, you're looking at it really close, it's cool to see all the textures and everything looks nice. So that was fun. So the students in hand building are, uh, went over to the gallery and they looked at the works by um, Dr. Wakefield and they uh, were, their project currently is uh, making work that was inspired by the show. And that inspiration can be pretty loose or pretty direct. So we have some pomegranates, we have some purses or handbags. Um, we also have a piece that is somebody doing a cartwheel. It's an evolution based off of the evolution series. Um, we also have some students who are focused on the sort of contrast between what's beneath the abaya or internal versus external. And so their pieces are more abstract, um, not directly the abaya, but they have the, the inside and ex interior exterior contrast and things like that. The Louis Vuitton purses that you uh, mentioned while he was telling us, that they like those. And um, I know in some cultures, especially previous time, I don't know if it currently is, in Kuwait, it was dangerous to go to school for a woman to be going yeah, to school. Yeah, yeah, you know, so I was thinking the purse hides the books. Oh, um, I'm going to lace these pieces together and then have a piece of leather holding these pieces so it doesn't open too far. And it'll just uh, be able to be opened and it's going to be sitting kind of like this. So why are you making an onion? Because it represents the layers, the layers that the ladies live under, under their clothes. There's so much more to them than just 
just that black. I don't want to. What is it called? Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. I figured it's like an onion. You peel them away and you see so much personality, so much. Uh, they're just like everybody else, kind of. <laughs> So I was inspired um, by the, uh, of course, the pomegranates. I tried to uh, you just some uh, uh, pomegranates because they're so beautiful Gallery continued the practice of curriculum integration with the exhibit Don Crook Painting the West. English, Art, and Humanities classes incorporated the exhibit and catalog into their studies and assignments. In 2015, a new exhibit involving the Women Painters of Washington will include a bilingual catalog offering educational opportunities for English, Art, and Spanish classes.